Hi, so we'll be creating a very basic destructible mesh, uh, a concrete pillar with some reinforced metal beams inside, like this. So when we shoot it, it breaks off into little pieces and chunks, and we still get the destructible to cling onto the metal reinforcement right here and here like <laughs> it's stuck in there to get a nice realistic effect so let's get started first of all you want to get the unreal editor obviously and we're gonna use the shooter game as a starter project so we can find it in the learn tab and then just go down and find the shooter game and download it so what this, what this is going to provide you is basically a very nice uh, first person shooter. So we can shoot our destructibles without any problem and everything is in there you need. So okay, cool. Just download and install it and open it. Um, go to file, new level and just create a default empty level. So we get something like this. We already have a ground in there and a player start. So that's why we created the default one and not the empty one. Because yeah, we have just some basics in here we're gonna need. So, sorry. So, okay, what we want now is some meshes to destroy. So for my example, I've got like a pillar mesh, which is basically a yeah, a, uh, a box, <laughs> not much more, and a metal beam, which is just a very thin, long cylinder which some, with some um, distortion on it, some noise. Okay, let's close this. Um, so you can basically make these as any 3D modeling software you want. I use 3ds Max, but you can use Blender or Maya or Modo, whatever. So for this example, we want to create a pillar. Okay. Um, but you want to look for a nice closed mesh. So what I mean with this is like the mesh is entirely closed, no holes in them. If we have something like this, now we have a hole in there. This is not good because we're probably going to get unwanted stuff in Unreal when we create the destructible. So just make sure you have no holes in there and nice closed mesh. And yeah, for the beam, I just created like a cylinder, very thin, long cylinder. And I just like warped it a bit to get a, a cooler effect. Right? So, okay, whatever. Just export this as an FBX and go back to Unreal. So you can just drag and drop it in the content, but I already have some stuff right here, so it's fine. So now, how do you create this destructible mesh? Very easy, just right click it and create destructible mesh. Now it creates like a duplicate, but it's not exactly the same because we can already see in the name and in the color this is pillar example and this is pillar example DM, which stands for destructible mesh. You can also see the aesthetic mesh has like a blue, bluish, light bluish color. And the destructible mesh has a pinkish red color. So, so it's quite easy to instantly see what is our destructible mesh and what is our static mesh. So let's open this. Uh, when you have some troubles with the lighting, sometimes you get like dark sides um, and you can't see the mesh, mesh really clear. So we can just rotate lighting by pressing L on our keyboards and click and dragging with our mouse so we can change the lighting. So that's pretty useful. But now for the destructible mesh. We have basically two ways to get the destructible mesh into Unreal, yeah, actually three. 
but okay, let's keep it simple right now. So we can import FBX chunks. That's not what we want right now. I'll probably explain this later, maybe in another tutorial. Um, what we're gonna do now is use the fracture mesh. So this will break our mesh into pieces. Uh, and it uses like the Voronoi diagram, which is basically a mathematical diagram that creates cells inside of the mesh and breaks up the mesh uh, according to those cells. Uh, if we look down here, we see the cell side count, which is 25 right now. So if we click this fracture mesh button, the mesh will be fractured into 25 cells. So let's do this. Boom, okay. It's not really what we want because you can see we have got like one huge chunk right here. Just make it a little bit clearer. One huge chunk right here and then some smaller down here. So we want it to be spread out evenly. So to get rid of this big ugly chunk, we're just gonna create or generate a new randomly uh, fractured mesh. We can do this by changing the fracture seat right here. If you go down to the options again, and by default it's zero, and you can just put in a different number. It doesn't really matter what it is, just something different. And fracture mesh again, and now we see we get a different mesh. Okay, it's already looking a bit better, but still we have like big chunks here and right here. We don't really want that, or I at least don't. So we're gonna take a look at the cell side count again. By default it's 25. We wanna crank it up to maybe 100, for example. If we fracture again, you can see the mesh is fractured in 100 uh, chunks. So now it looks a lot cooler, a little bit more realistic. So let's save it and check it out in the viewport. So now if we shoot it, it should like crumble into a hundred pieces. Yep. That's not really how concrete behaves. So we're going to need to change some other parameters to get a better effect. So our destructible mesh is not really uh, behaving like concrete. So we want to change some settings in the destructible mesh editor. Just open it up again by double clicking it. And we can go down to hierarchy depth. Now by default it will be zero, but we don't want it to be zero because we will always get like the mesh just falling apart into pieces even if we shoot it only once at the bottom or something. So we want the support depth to match the amount of depth we see here. Like we get the preview depth of zero, which is basically just our mesh. And then the preview depth of one, which is the mesh divided up into different chunks. Um, you can also get like a depth of two and three if you use a program like Physics Labs where you can create multiple depths, but that's not for now. So our maximum depth is one. So here we want to put in one. Okay, save. And let's test it out now. So it's still collapsing into a hundred pieces, still not what we want. So we go back to the editor and take a look at the damage spread. Now the damage spread, what it does, it basically takes the damage, let's say you shoot here, and it will spread it throughout the mesh. So if this chunk gets a damage of like a thousand, this mesh uh, this piece will get like damage of 9,800 or something. And eventually this one will still get like damage of 200, um, which causes the mesh to collapse entirely, even if you only shoot this, only this piece. So if you want to create like glass or something, something that really shatters, you want to set the damage spread to something high, like 0 0.1 or even higher. But for concrete, where the damage spread is really low, so if we shoot this like this little piece, 
we don't want this piece to also uh, fly off. So we only want this piece to like break off the mesh. It may be this piece, but probably not. So how we're gonna do this, just super easy. The damage spread, set it to zero or something very low, like 0 0.001 or something, but let's just be sure and set it at zero. So now if we shoot this little piece, only this piece will get damaged and, and be destroyed. Save and go back to the editor. So that's much better. Uh, now we see only the chunks we shoot get destroyed. But <laughs> we still have this. So the mesh will fall off because yeah, it it's just a separate mesh and it's physics mesh. So it will just drop on the floor. We don't want it. So this is where we are going to use our metal beams. So the metal beam doesn't need to have to be inside of the destructible. I find it easier to just have the separate static mesh right here. Just drag it in the scene and put it inside of the mesh. Um, if you want to have three or four in there, that's fine. I just press Alt and drag it. So I create the duplicates. So we can quickly check it out. I create created three of them in there again by just pressing Alt and dragging them. So we create duplicates. Um, let's just put this over again. Okay. So the metal beams are inside of the of the destructible mesh. But we still have to need to change some settings inside of destructible mesh because now it won't look at any of the metal beams and just still fall apart like this like it doesn't do anything so just change one setting super easy go down to flags and here we see the world support just activate this one and basically what it does is every chunk will look at it its environment basically um, and try to cling on to the environment for our example is the metal beams but it can be anything anything with a collision i believe so okay save and check it out again Okay, so this is already way cooler because this piece won't fall off because it's clinging onto the uh, metal beams and even some smaller parts are still um, trying to cling on and, and you can still break them off but it won't be as easy so that's cool. Um, but our concrete doesn't really look like concrete at all <laughs> because it doesn't have any materials on, on it. so. Close the application, go back to the pillar example. Oh, and you already see uh, I've got two materials set up. So just create a material by right click material, open it up, and yeah, basically put in some textures and stuff. Uh, there are a lot of different tutorials out there to make cool materials, so I'm not gonna focus on this right now. Um, Okay, just delete this. So go to the destructible mesh, go to destructible settings, and we're gonna go down to the skeletal mesh. If you open this up, we already see we already see like materials right here. So if you open this up, we get two members. Oh, uh, I mean two elements. Uh, the first element is basically the material that will be assigned to the outside of the mesh. Like everything we see right now. And the second material will be assigned to anything that's inside of the mesh. So those pieces right here, like with the big checkers on them. 
so for this example, I'm just going to use a, a quite a smooth concrete material for the outside. Um, this one, and for the inside, I want to use like a rough concrete for the inside. Um, okay, cool. So now we already see like this is quite smooth material on the outside and a rough bumpy material on the inside. Save it and check it out. So we can see like a, a smooth clean concrete on the outside and if we shoot it we see this very rough concrete on the inside. Um, yeah, this is just an example, so the materials are, aren't super great, <laughs> but it's doing the job. Um, but now, it's already looking quite good, but if we shoot down the pieces on the bottom, and at the top, Like the metal beams will be exposed and, and really visible, and we really don't want that because it doesn't really look nice, right? Because the metal beams are just coming straight out of the ground, and, and there they're just disappearing in of the air, in the air. So we're gonna gonna just change some settings to like cover it up, basically. So to cover up the ugly ends of the metal beams, we are going to change some stuff in the destructible mesh. So open up it, open it up. And we're gonna take a look at the bottom ones and the top ones. You can select these separate chunks by just clicking them. And if you wanna select multiple chunks, you can just hold control on your keyboard and click them. So, so for example, now the lighting is all dark. So just press L on your keyboard and click and drag to change the lighting. All right, cool. So now we can see everything again and go up and select these ones. Yep, good enough. Um, yeah, also you can navigate in this uh, viewport by just uh, using your arrow keys and changing the camera direction by right clicking and moving the camera basically. So now you see these chunk parameters have popped up. So these are just your normal settings, but we have to be in the chunk parameters. And you have a few settings right here. And the only one we are going to use right now is the do not damage. So if we check this, the chunks we have selected right now, will be set to do not damage. So basically they can't uh, receive any damage. So basically be indestructible. Okay, let's check it out. Save, go to our projects and play. And the, now if we shoot the bottom ones, they shouldn't be able to break off. And the other ones are still able to be destroyed. So what this does is it basically just covers up the ugly um, metal beams that just come out of the ground by having this concrete still uh, still there and stripped them. So yeah, that's it.